Would you call the meeting to order for the District of Chapman, 4.30 a.m. February 4th? <coughs> partners involved, 
and for the college and, and the school district as well. Um, some founding partners within that, uh, um, it's now Enbridge, but it was Duke Energy, then Spectre, now Enbridge. Um, and Canada was, was there on the ground floor as well. Um, Northern Development Initiative Trust uh, was a key um, financial backer in all of this. They've been providing uh, funding for uh, Northern Opportunities for about 14 years. And that funding that comes uh, to the three districts uh, to provide support for someone called a shoulder tapper. We, and Sherry really is the shoulder tapper here in, in Chapman. Her role again is to connect with those students and, and help them to explore different career pathways. Um, we have uh, um, a connection with the Northeast Advancement Society, NENATS, with the Shell School in Port Nelson. Um, Shell Canada has been on, on board right from the get go. BC Hydro sort of come and gone. We don't see much of them right now, but they have been a, a key financial backer over the years. Uh, the ITA, Industry Training Authority, uh, that connection with them around the trade opportunities provided is key, and now CapScan is another uh, a new recent addition to that group. Um, the program part of, of uh, what we do as a, as a district, um, I, I think, uh, um, helps fulfill the need of, of the students. We don't uh, kind of stumble into programs lightly. I think that Northern Opportunities Group uh, sitting around the table and talking about what the, the needs are, some of the, the future needs of industry and communities helps. Um, we recently had a, a labor market report come up with it from the provincial government, and one of the stats in there says that in the next 10 years, only 3% of the jobs available in the province are going to be uh, jobs that require less than high school education. Um, we encourage all of our students to graduate, but uh, support kids all the way through to the best of our ability, and we don't want to see anybody left behind, but that stat is, is discouraging, knowing that our graduate is not 100%. Uh, the partnerships and the, the dual credit programs and some of the other, other uh, programs we provide uh, help kids uh, who may not be on the regular path to graduation but find, find some purpose and meaning and opportunity to get to graduation in a different format. Um, in the stats here from that labor report, Mark report also says that it says that 20% of the jobs we for the next uh, 10 years will require high school or occupation specific training and then another 41% will require trades training or some apprenticeship training along the way. So really, uh, in our area, I think that uh, demand is even higher, but uh, hoping to fill that some, some of that into the partnership created here. Um, dual credit, I mentioned that, that term, that's where uh, students, uh, again, gain high school credit, but college credit in a specific trade or vocational area at the same time, usually in their grade 12 <laughs> year. It's a, programs are offered at Northern Lakes College, and we have a couple of programs offered on site at Dawson Creek Secondary at Dawson Creek. We've had a few offered here through Northern Lakes College and check over the years as well. <coughs> 18 different programs currently available right from carpentry and plumbing and heavy duty mechanics right through to uh, some uh, vocational programs such as uh, practical nursing, um, applied business technology, and there's a new one in, in, in the back of the year in a little bit, but there's, there's a, a range of great programs to suit uh, the wide variety of interests. Um, Numbers in, in our dual credit programming are down a little bit uh, historic from our historic highs. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that. A little bit smaller enrollment in high school will impact that. Some program offerings at the college have been uh, put on hiatus or discontinued. Um, and then uh, we did have transportation running from Chetna to Dawson Creek for a number of years. And then uh, that, um, for a variety of reasons, was uh, uh, discontinued, I think, three years ago. Um, and still uh, application from students every year. I think Sherry has a handful again for September. Yes. Yeah. Um, and on the slide there, it talks about a trade center program. That's a Dawson Creek specific one right now. It's, it's 16 students in uh, doing a variety of trades in a one semester program. We've looked at doing that here. The small cohort size with only about 50 students at each grade level here it makes that a challenge to get 16 students out of that. Uh, that uh, one grade level in there, but we have been talking about that. Um, the other piece on there near the bottom was our work experience uh, um, at WEX, uh, acronym up there, uh, where students can get credit for high school while they're working, uh, whether it's paid or volunteer. And Sherry uh, has done an amazing job of connecting students with employers to do both the experiential work experience uh, aspect, where they might be on site in an unpaid position, job shadowing with a, with a um, local employer, learning what it's like, and 
and re recently there's been a bit of a shift to uh, students who have paid employment uh, looking to use that as a work experience credit as well. They can get up to four credits of the ADD for graduation through work experience. Uh, the program where we're seeing the, the highest um, increase in numbers really is that youth work in trades, which was formerly secondary school apprenticeship. Um, we target across the entire district to have 25 students in that. We're well over 40 right now, and a number of, of them in, in, uh, in Chetland, thanks in part to the, like, the Harvard the Sheriff's Academy, and having kids with local, local uh, trades people. Um, that one, they get uh, a head start on, on their apprenticeship. They can uh, um, put hours towards their, their designation um, and also get credits for graduation, equivalent of, of 16 credits, which is four full course credits for graduation. They uh, complete those hours within the, the time they're in high school, and then if they're still in that trade post high school, six months six months after high school, they're eligible for a thousand dollar scholarship as well. So um, lots of incentive to get kids connected uh, through that. Um, and Sherry and I sort of uh, made some uh, guesses about why the number of those graduate students are down and why the number of uh, secondary school apprenticeship numbers are up. Um, and students, I think, put a bit of a price tag on their social interaction during their high school career. And uh, if they can um, be getting uh, apprenticeship hours towards a trade with an employer who may put them through trade training after high school, uh, why give up a uh, year of uh, grade 12 with your friends in, uh, in local high school like Jeff second year? So um, that's one of our theories around, around the lowering numbers, but uh, also to other stuff involved there too. Um, Northern Opportunities had, had some key goals, uh, increasing student and parent interest in those career pathways, increasing the types of program offerings available, uh, community partnerships, and then a seamless transition from, from uh, school to the workforce. And I think through the partnership pieces uh, provided um, in, in not only School District 59, but 60 and, and 81 as well, that uh, we are meeting that, that, uh, th those goals. Um, the key one here in this, this presentation though is about the power of partnership and uh, what the uh, message that you folks may help us uh, uh, share with the local industry, uh, small business, and, and uh, other uh, employers such as Northern Health, et cetera, um, about the importance of making those connections for students. Um, one of the uh, sort of the mantra of Northern Opportunities is uh, train in the North, stay in the North. And we see lots of leakage over young people heading off to, to other areas. They might think that uh, things are, are better and brighter and, bigger centers, but there's loads of opportunity here in the north to um, have great careers. Um, it's a great place to live and work and, and, and grow a family. So uh, that's part of the, the <coughs> rationale behind all of this as well. Um, we have a number of special events that are, are coming up throughout the remainder of the, of the year. Um, Skills Canada if you, uh, has a big competition, regional skills competition, is in Dawson Creek at Northern Lakes College on February 22nd. Uh, that's uh, events right from junior skills, spaghetti bridge making, and, and gravity cars, and wind turbine, right up to uh, post-secondary skills in, in the trades. We have high school students competing in the trades uh, side of things as well. And then a bit of a change over the last couple of years, we've had um, uh, some more academic pieces. There's a public speaking component, uh, job interview, I think there's a work, work safe piece, a work safe training one as well. So a few different pieces there as well. And then robotics has come on. Uh, strong uh, in the region as well. Um, along with that event, on the 22nd, we have uh, an event called Try a Trade, and every grade seven student in our district, as well as I think uh, six or seven classes from Fort St. John come down to experience a variety of uh, hands-on activities um, at the college at the same time that that big skills competition is going on. They get to work with uh, some of our local um, school district employees and volunteers around doing some small scale projects as they circulate through the site. And they also get to see what the, the Skills Canada event is like as well. So it, it, and see the college and their brand new uh, training facility there too. So there's lots of uh, um, uh, sort of spin-off benefits to students for taking part in that. And I uh, look forward to seeing the grade seven students from Chetland uh, there on that day. Um, we have a big event, uh, well, before that, but we have a, a Students from all three communities across the Creek, Humber Ridge, and Chapman, uh, heading off to the um, Youth Innovation Day at the BC Tech Summit in Vancouver on March 14th, no, March 12th, I believe. We're just going through that final um, reviewing applications and setting all that up. It's a one-day event held at the Convention Center 
uh, the conference style for the students. They get to see everything from robotics to uh, digital filmmaking to 3D printing, all of that with uh, key uh, individuals from the larger tech companies around the, the world and around the province. Plus, they get to meet the post-secondary schools as well. So we have two students from Jeff and Secondary joining us on that trip. Um, the next big one is their School District 59 Heavy Equipment Experience happening in Chetham. Uh, last year was our first year. Uh, we work with a, a large number of local contractors, um, implement dealers from uh, the Peace region uh, to put on a, a week-long event, experiential event for students, uh, uh, the bulk of it in Chetham, uh, where they got to operate a range of heavy equipment to, from the logging and sort of earth moving side of things uh, for a full week. Great reviews from, from the kids on what that experience provided to them, but also from the contractors and others, uh, volunteers involved, local suppliers as well, on, on the connection piece they made and the importance they felt that, that was in the community as well. So that one, uh, Sherry has some paperwork on that I'll leave with you, but just uh, a little bit of information to leave behind on that one. I encourage you to connect with uh, Sherry about uh, coming out to the site uh, this year and having a look. Uh, we're right across the road from the log yard at West Fraser Hills and uh, be there for that full week from May 6th to May 10th. Uh, the other event that follows right on the heels of that is the Peace Energy Week. We partnered, it's a Northern Opportunities event. We partnered with the School District 60. Um, it's a four-day event uh, with probably 15 to 20 students from the <coughs> of our districts, and then we bring students from other parts of the province to experience what the energy sector is like in this region. Um, that's uh, wind, oil and gas, hydro, and uh, they tour a number of facilities, they get a bit of workforce training as well, and um, uh, exposure to what that what work might be like in that particular setting. So um, that's the big one. We've got a couple other ones in there that are sort of half along the way. We, we get uh, funding grants along the way too that provide some other opportunities that just aren't, aren't listed up there. Uh, a couple pieces on that slide too, just our graduation rates. And so our uh, rate last year, 97% of our students in dual credit programs in our district um, were successful. That's a pretty solid success rate, uh, given that uh, our, our overall graduation rate is, is probably at least 10 points below that, and working on that. Um, the number up there says participating Aboriginal grad rates of 80 to 85 percent, and that's a regional stat, Dawson, or, or uh, school district 59, 60, 81. And uh, ours would be higher than that, the, the graduation rates for students in dual credit. We have a long ways to go, though, in, in getting the number of Aboriginal students up in those programs. And there's some, some uh, distance issues, I think, that tie into that as well. Um, and then the last item there is the industry partners. Uh, over 125, and even in our, our heavy equipment experience project last year, uh, we had, uh, the list was quite long, probably 40 or, or 50 different uh, um, companies, individuals, and organizations involved in that. Uh, we mentioned those upcoming events. Again, if you're interested in, in attending any of those, the, the Skills Canada event happening at Northwest College in Austin Creek is open to the public. Um, we do a district career fair. <coughs> we bus students from Chetland to that one, um, and, and Cumber Ridge as well. Um, we do an employer advisory meeting uh, uh, around our trade stuff at, at Dawson Creek one. Uh, Sherry has a different process here in, in uh, Chetland for connecting with individual employers. Um, we have the Heavy Equipment Project at Peace Energy Week, and again, if you're very interested in doing Heavy Equipment Work, we've got a piece to make with Sherry. Um, additional ways that we're connecting with students, oh, I'm just going to uh, we do some lunch and learn sessions where employers are coming with kids over lunchtime. Uh, there's uh, sponsorship of events, and we uh, will take kids on tours of, of work sites. So Sherry's been to the Bolton Mills here, uh, we've been to a number of sites in Dawson Creek, in McColl, as a, as a thing going here the last couple of years as well. Um, Internships are as a term that's coming up across the district, and then job shadows or short term placements. So, uh, the win win of career education. Um, this one that students can begin the post secondary studies, uh, enter the world of work while still in high school. Um, parents could be more cost effective if they pay some of that tuition of the way we pay the tuition for those trades programs. And then, um, communities with access to workforce, uh, workforce ready employees, those have those skills right out of high school. And off to the world of work. Um, our one ask uh, of you folks, and I said this at the start, the Northern Opportunities piece that I sort of touched on a little bit, um, we've been uh, very fortunate to have uh, Northern Development Initiative Trust and the Ministry of Education in our corner around providing additional funding for 
career programs across the north through, through, northern, develop, through northern opportunities. Uh, we're in the sort of the last year of a five-year deal with them. We will be uh, um, reaching out to the IT and the ministry to uh, try to encourage that funding again. It's good. If you look at the number of success stories uh, out of all three communities in the southeast region, uh, tied specifically to the role of the shoulder tapper, the, the role that Sherry plays at, at this school, um, it's imperative that our, our uh, funding continue in that. And if you're at the table with the uh, um, ministry folk or anyone from NDIT and you start talking career education, you can uh, grab up the, the success of, of, of uh, students in our district and what that means to our communities as a whole to have those students uh, train here and stay here and, and uh, help further our communities. So um, and thank you very much for allowing me to uh, talk very fast here for the last 10 minutes. <laughs> If you have any questions, Sherry and I, I'm going to share you after you deal with the lead questions as well. We may talk about uh, career programs and school issues. I just have a question. Um, <clears throat> you mentioned the dual credit program. Um, do you see that taking off in general? I know right now it hasn't happened for quite a few years because, like you said, the travel um, to Dawson, um, stuff like that. Yeah, we had a meeting here with North Lakes College uh, planning meeting in the spring of last year, and they would they would love to offer programs here. Um, the challenge is uh, registration numbers. Um, so I think their their bid is uh, sort of the uh, cart and horse. Do they, they have the numbers to a program? Would they get the numbers if they had a program? So the, the programs being provided are really in North Lakes College uh, final decision. And we did a welding one year a couple of years ago where our senior yeah. next college did I think we had five or six students out of uh, general secondary in that. Yeah. And that took, was our best year ever as far as overall enrollment in dual credit programs. Um, and, and provided a neat opportunity for those students not to have to travel to Dawson Creek to do that. Because that's a financial burden. I recognize that. You stay in residence or find a place to stay with friends or whatever. Or, and then commute back and forth for, for students in grade 12 is not uh, under yeah. the with the dual program when it first started, because I know my oldest son did the dual program with power engineering. I didn't realize it was right through the organized college. It was BCITN. Oh, it was BCITN. Yeah, yeah. I it was BCIT. It was here. It was through BCIT. My first son did Yeah, it. it was pretty full. Yes, it was. And then power engineering was offered on the, on the Fort St. John campus. Uh, we, as an entire region, are guaranteed four seats in that program. So it's very competitive. Uh, we've been fortunate. I don't think we have a student in it this year, but normally we would have a handful of applicants and we will get two or three positions out of that. Um, the oil and gas field operator program happens up there as well as does uh, electrical. Sure. Uh, could I just get you uh, to get up to the podium there? When... <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's better. Uh, because uh, we we like to hear that. I, I just got one question, uh, Sherry. Uh, you were talking about successes. Do you have any in particular that you uh, are can give us an example of, or of uh, what's going on with the uh, WEX and that? Um, actually, our work, our work experience program. Um, I've actually got a very good connection with different shops in town now, and so quite often they'll phone and they're looking for a student. And actually, we just had one a while ago that did go through the program. Actually, went through the heavy duty program. And I actually got a call in May in regards to it, and I give the employer three names, and then told the student to take in resumes. Did they ended up hiring him? We changed his schedule. He had to come to do his English because his English was his main concern. Was very successful. They apprenticeshipped him, and now he's deciding he's gone into the dual credit in in Dawson Creek, but he still is contracting or working with that employer. Another one actually is. Their parent, his parents are in the room, was Ryan Heller, who decided at a very young age that he wanted to do a dual credit, had his courses set up to do it, um, had enough hours and the experience. He didn't have to do the foundation pro program. Graduated a year early, went into the level one um, heavy duty program in Fort St. John, and did it over a 10 week period. Uh, when I talked with the instructor, it was extremely with for Ryan's age and how well he did in an adult program. And I hope you don't mind me saying, actually, when he was done, 
He ended up at 89%. When I talked to the instructor the other day, he was one of the highest out of the class. So that's a success story also too. Because not only did he graduate, he's graduated a year early and he's walking out with his first level. And we actually have very many, uh, quite a few more stories that are that way, some in welding, some in different programs. But overall, it's been, yes, extremely, and I find Years ago, apprenticeship, I didn't have as many students, but now we're getting way more and it's been very successful. Yes? Thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. I'll leave you this here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, we have all facilities rented at the Chapman Recreation Center. Every room in that facility is booked for us. Uh, it is in high demand. We like to make sure that we host our guests and give them the best event possible. Um, so with that, it's pretty high budgeted costs for that. Um, the facility rental, we, we, um, we have premium rates every year, so it is quite costly. Um, so if you have any questions, Sorry, I just want to talk really fast. <laughs> and you have good. First of all, congratulations. Ten <laughs> years is um, very good. Thank you. Um, how, do you know if you have any troubles for the out of town teams getting hotel rooms yet? Every year, and I've spoken with our hotels this year, I'm actually really uh, happy to say that the Lakeview and the Pomeroy have sponsored um, platinum sponsorship, or one has sponsored platinum sponsorship in terms of they're putting up the entertainment acts for the weekend. So we have I think it's 35 rooms booked out just for our entertainment acts alone in Shetland. With that being said, Pomeroy, they are coming in, they have sponsored, but they sell it every year. Um, so what I do just to ensure that our other teams have our have their rooms booked is I usually block out 20 rooms for any gym because we want to make sure that we can give our out-of-town guests a place to stay. Uh, I've spoken with many business owners in Shetland. Everywhere is busy all weekend. Restaurants, um, hair salons, session, everything, um, nightclubs, the pub, everywhere. So everyone really sees economic growth from it. Um, but I don't think that they have a problem this year booking. We, when we do our registration, we release our host hotel information, and then they book immediately. So there's already teams booking in for that. And then as an HM, I said, we, we have 35 rooms booked. Allie, do you have an approximate figure on the dollar amount that the community benefits from? Or uh, yeah, so I would say if we roughly say every guest spends one hundred and seventy-five dollars a day average at the event, so that's times four days. You're looking at probably a thousand bucks a person. We have, or not a thousand bucks. My math is off. Six hundred bucks, um, or eight hundred bucks. Sorry, uh, just third year. I did my math there. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's. Coming in, we have approximately a participation count, so that's a head count, not an attendance count. Of six thousand are expected to come through the building this year. We have out of town guests coming from as far as Saskatchewan, I think, to this event, and then Northwest Territories, Yukon. Um, so there are expected to be a lot of guests for this event, but I don't actually have a, a ballpark figure for that. But I know it's quite high. So. Just have one more question. I'm bringing stuff in. Where are your hockey teams coming from? I'm just curious. Uh, we have some coming from Fort Nelson. We have one I think that might be coming from Meadow Lake. They're trying to put their team together. Uh, we have teams from Grand Prairie, Fort George, Fort St. James, um, Fort St. John, and then we have members coming from all over kind of Western Canada. We have teams interested. They were interested. They're waiting on the waitlist for Manitoba. Um, so we, it's quite, it's quite big. And the exciting thing about our event is that the A division you're allowed to be carded to play. So we have NPHL players. We have. Senior A, Senior B, Junior A, Junior B. We have players that went and played in Europe, like the European Hockey League, uh, NCAA players previously. Um, so it's quite, it's quite competitive. If you get a chance to come on, you'll we'll see. Mm -hmm. Questions? Oh. Okay. <laughs> I believe you will leave that with us, and uh, we will get back to you. Uh, what's the process here? We will. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah, so seven thousand. 
plus diamond level sponsorship. So great. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much. Ellie, go on you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we didn't uh, just uh, lose Terry, one of my best friends, but we did uh, lose uh, his daughter too, and uh, her uh, husband. Yes, I would also, also like to know, which I actually should have said. Um, so for the past, so we created this committee in 2013, uh, and unfortunately every year we do lose somebody in the hockey community. We do know if you're a part of the hockey community how close of a family we all are. Um, so since the beginning, we've had we've dedicated it to a member of Shetland. Um, this year, we will be dedicating it to Tammy Moore. She was one of our best volunteers. She was right there with us the whole time. So sadly, we are really going to miss her. But the Moore family is really honored that we're we're dedicating this to her, and we're really honored to to do it for her. So we're doing it for Tammy this year. So it's really it's going to be heartfelt. Thanks, Audrey, and uh, thank you, Ellie. Thank you. Well, by all, well, it's uh, right now, so uh, we'll go to uh, committee reports. I just <coughs> would like to discuss a little bit about the mayor's report. I've got a mayor's report on uh, uh, CR 3. I've got uh, CR1, CR2, and CR4. I like them to be blocked together to as accepted as is. Can we get a motion for that? CR, the regional district report, and uh, council report, and administration, uh, the administrative report. Sorry. All those in favor? Okay. Okay, uh, I submitted a report and I was uh, I was at the BC uh, Natural Resource Fund in Prince George. And this, uh, the whole thing was quite educational uh, for myself and uh, we, I got quite a bit of it being new to uh, council. And I did, we did schedule a meeting through the PRRD for a caribou uh, recovery. And we had a meeting with the ministers and they are willing to meet with us and they're coming uh, over to set up a meeting with the PRRD so we'll know a little bit more in the future. Probably, I'd say, uh, third week in February here. So we will hear more. It's an open meeting and we've always, uh, the PRRD, and uh, Chapman always wanted an open meeting. And hopefully they will uh, uh, get back to us as soon as possible and we will have a, a meeting uh, with, the, with the minister. They said, to, they told us that they were going to have a meeting with us openly. So anyway, with that, and for if my, all my reports that I try to uh, put forward there for everybody to read, and uh, if you have questions, I'll bring it forward to uh, the mayor and uh, I'll try to answer them. And if I don't give you the right answer, well, I'll find somebody to give you the right answer. <laughs> okay. So with that, uh, I'd like to motion to adopt the mayor's uh, report. I just have a question. Go ahead. Okay, so you mentioned the Bob Zimmer town hall meeting the other day as well. How did you feel that went? Do you want to share that with us? It went the same as every other meeting that we had with, had with uh, to do with the uh, uh, caribou recovery, and we've talked about why and where and what, and yet we didn't hear anything from the provincial government. So they are telling us nothing right now. So and we're Minister Donaldson was there, though, correct? Pardon me. Wait, Minister Donaldson was there? No. Oh, no no ministers Donaldson. were at the meeting. Just MLAs and uh, Bob Zimmer, the MP. Okay, I would move you a report. Second. All those in favor? Okay, correspondence uh, C1 and uh, C2. Okay. Do I Okay, let's go to the discussion items first, so we'll get that out of the way. So, 
email from the Peace River Regional District dated January 18, 2019. Save the, save, save the date uh, for 2019 Peace River Local Governments Association meeting. I'll make that recommendation. The council authorize all members of council to attend the Peace River Local Government Association meeting in Port St. John on March 28th. All those in favor? Carried. EI2. Email from Peace River Regional District dated December 21st, 2018. Peace River Regional District a request for review New West Peace Fringe Area OCP. I would make that motion to you for seat for activation. So I'll second that. All those in favor? Okay, your correspondence. So we will uh, accept correspondence C1 and C2 as is. Some of it work. Sure. Report for action. Let's go to uh, 10 uh, zoning amendment. I love 4724 and 4720 Airport Road. Your Worship, I would like to be excused from the seat conflict in this please. I would also like to be excused from the seat conflict Okay. Noted. Thank you. 
people have known the far end of it for a long time. It gets pretty jammed up down there. It's just maybe a little slower speed than 30 years ago. <coughs> I would 
leaders would have to be uh, put out when we have our, uh, mm -hmm. what do you call it? And it is I appreciate that. that. My property. It's not to travel. Yeah, I appreciate Perfect. that. Thank you. But uh, it is beautiful to probably get in there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, German. Come on. Okay. Oh, David. sorry. Yes. <laughs> Make that motion. I was in Lima. And we'll go up where there is, just up the hill here is where my grandma Marceline lived, where I lived and was raised. I'm trying to figure out today, I think we moved here in 1960. Everybody, we squatted up here. We, nobody owned their properties. My grandma, for extra dollars, she used to make hides every day. It, all my life I could remember her making hides. As you can see on the one video, um, this is what she did for extra dollars.
So everything is valid in the book, and it's a novel, but it's but from Ontario West, yes. Oh, it's amazing. Um, I guess you tell I was born in the fields, that is my only home, and the place is a band, they call me Roger Swole, oh, 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 I'm gonna